Welcome back to Apex Languages Weekly Wordplay. I'm your host, Stephanie, and today I want to introduce you to some fun Americanisms. What are those? Americanisms are words that originated in the United States of America and or are most common here. They're terms you probably didn't learn if you originally studied British English. They're also less likely to be taught in traditional English classes. But if you live here now, they could be very useful to know. The first word, bunkum, should be of particular interest to all you North Carolinians out there, for better or worse. Repeat it with me. Bunkum, bunkum, bunkum. Uh, this is a noun. And what is this? It's etymological story time. Hooray! The reason I love this word is the story behind it, so allow me to share. The year was 1820. The place, Congress. North Carolinian representative Felix Walker stands up to give a very long, very boring, very irrelevant speech, which annoys all his fellow congressmen. But when they ask him to give it up and sit back down, he refuses. At least something he said might be worth reporting in a newspaper back home. And then he would have proof that he was actually doing something there in Washington. Job security, right? I shall not be speaking to the House, he explains, but to Buncombe. That is Buncombe County, North Carolina. The story was reprinted in 1841, and the word bunkum, respelled to be more phonetically friendly, thankfully, grew in popularity, meaning nonsense, especially something said that is either foolish or insincere. The person doesn't mean what they say, they're just trying to get others to give them what they want, like reelected. Worry, I didn't forget your sample sentence. I'm so sick of all these political commercials. They're total bunkum. Anyone else agree with me? Of course, legally, the politicians have to be careful to make sure that what they put on the air is technically true. But that still leaves a lot of wiggle room to bend the truth in ways that benefit them and hurt their opponents. I don't trust any of the ads, Democratic nor Republican. I trust what I can research. Everything else, as far as I'm concerned, is pure bunkum. For the record, you can also call it bunk for short. And that brings me to one more point about this word. You see, bunkum is not as popular as it once was almost 200 years ago. But we do have another word that evolved from it that's much more common nowadays. Debunk, a word. If you debunk something, you unbunkify it or take the nonsense away. You expose it as either simply untrue or exclaim to the world that they were being tricked. Now let's look at the sample sentence. Since the idea that Christopher Columbus was a great man has largely been debunked, cities across the U.S. have started rebranding his holiday as Indigenous Peoples Day. You didn't think that I forgot today is Columbus Day, did you? Italian Americans insisted on this holiday because they wanted to prove to their fellow countrymen, who were treating them like trash, that Italians had done great things. Indeed, that without Italians, there would be no America. And that's great. But not only was Columbus an idiot, Scholars of his day already knew how big the world was, and he was trying to prove them wrong with bad math. And then when he showed up in Cuba, he thought he was in Japan. But he was a self-righteously cruel idiot. He did terrible, terrible things to the natives, establishing a pattern for all those who would follow. Therefore, the idea that he deserves our praise is bunkum, and I'm glad that it is being debunked. Gobbledygook. 
boy, isn't that a fun word to say? Repeat it with me. Gobbledygook, gobbledygook, gobbledygook. A noun. This is another word for nonsensical language, specifically speech with a lot of hard to understand jargon or technical terms and circumlocution which means that you go in circles with your words, basically saying the same thing over and over again. The result is that you sound pompous or highfalutin, another Americanism. You're far too important to speak in a way that normal human beings understand, right? The student's report was pure gobbledygook. None of it made any sense. This phrase was coined by another politician, Maori Maverick from Texas, grandson of Samuel Maverick, who is responsible for our noun Maverick, which means a rebel, someone who doesn't like to go along with what everyone else is doing. Clearly, they were a fun family. Chairman of the World War II U.S. Smaller War Plans Corporation, in a memo from 1944, he banned all gobbledygook language and threatened that anyone using the words activation or implementation will be shot. Fancy words that in many situations are just there for show. He later explained that he made up the word to imitate the sound that a turkey makes. Gobble, gobble, right? With that in mind, you can imagine that this word is probably best for slightly less formal situations. Still, it's a lot of fun, isn't it? Before I leave, I want to give you a few more American synonyms for bunkum and gobbledygook. They all more or less mean that whatever someone is saying is not worth listening to. First of all, we have hooey. In certain areas, an animated hooey can mean, wow, but you're more likely to hear it in a sentence like, I don't believe you, that's a bunch of hooey. Or you can say, that's bologna. This is an American spelling of the Italian sausage. At first, it meant idiot. Now it's used to describe what an idiot says. American author Mark Twain is said to have been the first person to put together hot and air to describe politicians and their empty talk. Poppycock is an American combination of two Dutch words, meaning soft food and, well, caca, poop. Obviously, it was meant as an insult, although no one realizes how dirty this word actually is anymore. It actually comes across now as kind of fancy. Speaking of poop, the last word I have for you today is bull, short for bull crap which is a family-friendly alternative to the naughty swear word, bullshit. This is not as bad as some curse words. You can use it among friends, but none of these varieties are really work appropriate. The abbreviation for those trying to be a little more politically correct is BS, as in, that's a load of BS. I've given you a lot of nonsense today, so let's get serious for a minute and do some practice. Write a sentence or two using some of the words we've discussed here today. My theme has been politics, so you're welcome to vent a little and have fun. While you're busy posting that in the comments below or in an email, feel free to include any other fun words you can think of. Americanisms, nonsense words, whatever you'd like. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Thanks as always for watching. There's plenty more to learn at my website, apexlanguages.com. Until next time, I hope you have a happy, healthy day with as little BS to deal with as possible.